Hello guys, good evening. How are you doing today? Hello, hello. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me guys? I'm going to guess that you can hear me. So um, welcome back once again to another class, guys. Another week, something else that we have to learn today. This is our last week, guys. So it means that from today's class, we just have three more classes. Well, actually two more. And on Thursday, we are going to have evaluation, which is going to be uh, an exam, which is the last day that we are going to be working together. So, uh, well, I told you last time that on Thursday we're having that evaluation. So it means that we just have today, tomorrow, and the day after two uh, of classes. Because the last one on Thursday, the 23rd, is going to be an evaluation. So uh, I guess that you are all ready for that. In case you are not, you still have three more days for you to study, okay? So as usual, I'm going to start asking you questions about the last topic that we saw, which in this case was about prepositions, as far as I know. So we saw a lot of prepositions, but we saw three different types of prepositions. So who can tell me what are the three types of prepositions that we have in English? Place. Play. Time. Yeah. Time. Yeah, place and time. And what is the last one? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, someone so else? But thank you so much for that. I mean, at least two of those are correct. So what about the last one? She mentioned prepositions of place and prepositions of time. Do we have another one? Because we, we saw three, actually. So which is the last one? Does any one of you remember which is the last one? You only mention preposition of time and prepositions of place. So which is the last one? Preposition of direction. Prepositions of directions. Thank you so much, Rosemary. So those are the three times, uh, types of prepositions that we have. When I want to talk about a precise time or something specifically about the time, which preposition do I have to use? Do you guys remember which is the preposition that I have to use when I refer to that? At. At. Excellent. That's the one. What about when I want to talk about days and dates? Which is the preposition I have to use? On. On. Excellent. So... Can you guys, well, I'm going to ask you guys to write an example of your own on the chat so I can, uh, I can see, I mean, if you understood, obviously. So I want you to use the preposition of place. Let me see. I'm going to tell you which one. Let me see. We saw the preposition of place in front of. So I need you to use that preposition of place in one sentence. So you just, you just have one minute for you to think about it and just write it down in the chat, okay? I just scroll the, the one that I want you to use on the chat so you can have it there too. Can 
Thank you very much, Patricia and Vilma. Okay, Patricia, in that case, the sentence is clear. I mean, it's clear what you're trying to say, but in the last part, in la última parte, you are using of the, my house. So there, you don't have to use the. You just have to say my car. Because if you have, if you have, it doesn't make sense, but it's correct. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see. He's in front of a chair. Okay, my house is in front of the park. Okay, the chair is in front of that TV. Okay, so we are 13. We are 13, and I just have one, two, three, four, five. So what about the other ones? I just have Patricia, Vilma, Damaris, Rosemary, and Maximo. I'm still missing the one for Fatima, Emperatriz, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, Sonia, Ana Maritza, Carlos Antonio, Arnoldo, and Claudia. I'm still missing all of you guys. What we're doing, if you just connected, what we are doing is we are trying to make a sentence or create a sentence using the preposition in front of. Okay, Sonia, I can see yours right now. Well, so we're going to move on, guys, because time, you know, time is go. My full, my mother have a house in front of the beach. Okay. My work is in front of the, in front, in front of, we're still missing Emperatriz there, in front of, aún te falta ahí in front of, because there it says my house is from the gas station. So you're still missing a little part there. Elizabeth, I can see yours too. So thank you very much for those who are always participating. As I always tell you, I do appreciate that. And I always take that into consideration for your weekly evaluation, okay? So um, we are going to move on. Arnoldo, I can see yours too right now. Let me see who else. I am in front of the mirror. My house is in front of the cathedral, okay. Thank you very much, guys, for your examples. So today, we are going to see or we are going to check another grammatical uh, tense, which is present perfect. I can, I can listen to, to a TV. Can you please? Okay, thank you. So today we are going to see the present perfect. Have you ever heard about the present perfect guys or do you have any idea what the present perfect is? Does any one of you have any idea what I'm talking about or you have never heard about it? Teacher, yo siempre me confundo con eso. With the, with the tenses, con los tiempos. Sí, definitivamente. Creo que estoy más perdida que la china en el bosque, pero ahí voy tratando de encontrar el camino. <laughs> I know, I understand. Um, what are my suggestions? Una de las, quizás de las sugerencias que podría darte es like, do not try to memorize, no tratar de memorizar el tiempo, sino que aprenderte más que todo la estructura Y con esa estructura tú saber más o menos por dónde vas, porque si nos aprendemos solo el tiempo o present perfect, simple past, entonces ahí siempre nos vamos a confundir because there's a lot of tenses, hay muchos tiempos. So, but what about the other ones? ¿Qué hay de los demás? Does any one of you know about present perfect or no? Well, I guess that's a no. So today, guys, we are going to check about present perfect. And when I say present perfect, the present perfect is something that we use. It's an action that we started on the past, but that action, we still have that action on the present. And we will probably have that action on certain part of the future. 
but it's really important that we understand the difference between the present perfect and the simple past. So today we are going to only focus on the present perfect. And I hope, espero que a este punto ya hayan estudiado los verbos, ¿verdad? Irregulares, irregulares, porque ahora los vamos a necesitar. So I hope you study them. So we are going to move on and try to, I mean, understand how we are going to use the present perfect. And first of all, we have a brief explanation. We have like a, a definition about what is the present perfect tense. What is that? Um, let me see, Vilma, would you like to help me reading the, the definition, please? Yes, teacher. In English, we use the present perfect tense to talk about experiences and events in the past, which are through or still happening up until right now. It often doesn't have specific time for when it happened. Okay. Now, as we can see here, it says that we talk about experiences or events in the past, which are still true or happening until right now. It means that when we use the present perfect, it doesn't have an specified time from when it happened. So here we have, aquí tenemos una timeline para que ustedes entiendan, so you can understand a little bit about the usage, cómo utilizarlo. So, as we can see there, como dice, es una acción que empezó en el pasado. Empezamos aquí, right? En el pasado, Like a week ago, por ejemplo, hace una semana, yo pude haber hecho algo. I did something in the past. Pero esa acción yo todavía la traigo, la traigo, la traigo y hasta el presente yo todavía lo puedo estar haciendo. O lo puedo hacer en el presente. Y en probably, probablemente en cierta parte del futuro yo lo vaya a hacer. What does it mean? It means that it doesn't have a specified time. Por eso es que dice, it doesn't have a specific time from when it happened. No tenemos un tiempo específico cuando pasó. But it's an action that you did it on the past and you can still do in the present. So that's what we have to understand. Okay? So we have some examples right here. This is just a matter like introduction, a brief review of what the present perfect is. Of course, later on, we are going to have some more examples So you can clearly understand what I'm talking about. So here we have, I have been to Paris. What do you guys understand when you read to that? Or when I say that I have been to Paris? What do you guys understand? Yo estuve He en París. estado, teacher. He estado. Porque si yo digo estuve, eso es pasado. Yo ya estuve, ya no voy a ir. But if I say I have been to Paris, he estado en París, es quiere decir que estuve en su momento, pero probablemente yo esta semana me vaya otra vez para París. ¿Sí? ¿Entendemos la lógica o el tiempo cómo lo vamos a utilizar? I mean, it's kind of, it's not difficult, but sometimes it can be a little bit confusing. That's, that's pretty much it. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of understanding how we have to use it. For example, another example that we have here, it says, I have eaten my sandwiches. What do you understand by that? Yo he comido. Yo he comido mis sandwiches. Me los he comido, pero probablemente en una hora yo voy a volver a hacer otro. So it's just a matter of understanding how we have to use it. So those, it, here we have here, it says it doesn't matter whether it recent eating sandwiches or many years ago. But the present perfect tense tell us that until the present, the event 
word experience has occurred. So, uh, with this brief review, with this brief explanation, do you guys have any questions so far? Hasta el momento, with this brief explanation, do we have something that, or, or any doubt till the moment? Well, we take that as a no. So, here we have. For the present perfect, we are going to use auxiliaries. These two auxiliaries, estos dos auxiliares, present perfect. We are going to use have with the pronouns I, you, we, and they. And we are going to use the auxiliary has for the pronouns he, she, and it. This is what you have to understand. Have I, you, we, they, has, he, she, it. That's it. Do not complicate too much. You just have to learn. So, Another important part, Maximo, can you help me reading this part, please? The present perfect tense, it formed using have or has, plus the past participle. This might sound confusing, but it's pretty easy when you can spot the patterns. Thank you very much. So as it says here, we have to remember. In this case, no vamos a, I'm going to say this in Spanish, guys, because I need you to understand, to really understand, okay? In este caso, no vamos a utilizar el pasado de los verbos. Vamos a utilizar el pasado participio, que es otra cosa completa, completamente no diferente, pero sí cambia. So we are going to have some details. So that's why I was telling you, es por eso que les estaba diciendo si estudiaron los verbos. Why? Because in the regular, with the regular verbs, con los verbos regulares, la misma forma del pasado va a ser la misma forma del pasado participio. But with the irregular verbs, con los verbos irregulares, la forma pasada no se parece nada a la forma del pasado participio. So we are going to try to understand that today. As it says here, this might sound confusing, but it's pretty easy when you can spot the patterns, okay? So we have some examples right here. Sometimes the present perfect is going to also be used when we want to Someone, when we're making an interview to someone and we want to know something about a, a person or we want to know something about someone. So we have some examples here. I have lived in Scotland all my life. We also have another one. I have owned a car since I was 18. I have moved house four times in my life. I have visited many countries in Europe. Okay? So, what I also need you to understand is that when we translate that, is this have or has, which is the auxiliary, este have or has se traduce en e o a. For example, si yo digo, if I say, I have lived in Scotland all, all my life. Yo he vivido en Escocia toda mi vida. So, Elizabeth, do you have a question? Yes, uh, precisamente eso le iba a preguntar. Eh, prefería pasar que por ignorante una vez y no toda la vida. Mm -hmm. ¿Por qué have y has... Este, ahora está teniendo otro papel, eh, porque yo entiendo que have es tener. Uh -huh. Entonces, me dije, ¿por qué have ahora está funcionando como, como, como que, o sea, así precisamente, que como que he tenido o he hecho algo, más uh -huh. que todo he hecho algo. Y me quedé así pensando, y yo, bueno, ni modo, le voy a preguntar, pero es precisamente lo que usted ahorita está Explicando. Uh, okay, yes. In this case, 
eh, aunque nosotros ya sabemos que have or has significan tener, en this case ya no significan tener porque ya no son utilizados como verbs. En this case, they are being used, están siendo usados como auxiliaries. And since we use them as auxiliaries, y desde que los utilizamos como auxiliares, en este tiempo se traducen como a o e. Por ejemplo, e, y las terminaciones del pasado participio o past participle siempre van a ser vivido, comido, jugado, saltado. Eh, eh, what, what else? Lavado. Eh, siempre van a terminar like the last or the endings of those when we translate them to Spanish is going to be ado. So another example here. I have owned a car since I was 18. Yo he, he sido dueño de un carro. I have owned desde los 18. So another one, I have moved house four times in my life. Yo me he movido de casa cuatro veces en mi vida. So in this case, have or has won't have the same meaning. En este caso, cuando digan present perfect, nos tenemos que olvidar de que has or have significan tener. En este caso, because they will always be auxiliaries, so they will never have the same meaning. Okay, so another question till the moment. No question so far? I hope that you are understanding. So, nos vamos a acordar un poquito de los verbos, right? Regular verbs. Vamos a ver. Uh, we're going to start with Máximo. Máximo, make the pronunciation, please, of these five here. These five verbs that we have here. One, two, three, four, five. Let me listen to you. Locked. Looked. Mm -hmm. Missed. Mixed. Packed. Thank you very much. That was actually really good. So that was a very good pronunciation. Now, let me, let me see. Can I have a volunteer? Any volunteer that would like to participate in this part? Carlos Antonio. Okay, Carlos Antonio and Arnold. Okay, Carlos Antonio. I need you to help me making the presentation of these five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Needed, painted, mm -hmm. plant, planted, printed, pretended. Okay, that was good. Not bad at all. Was really good. Some of them we just need to make a strong, a strong, a strong, a strong stress. So Arnoldo, Arnoldo, can you help me please uh, making the pronunciation of these five? One, two, three, four, five. Let me see. Agreed. Uh, allow. Mm -hmm. Answer. Um, up. Uh, yes, this is no me acuerdo, teacher. Uh huh. It's fine. Let's go to the next one. Ar a river. A mm -hmm. river. Mm -hmm. You live. Okay, leave it there. Thank you very much. So, okay. uh, this one is agreed, allowed, answered, allowed. appeared, appeared, arrived. yeah, all uh, right, Come yeah. On. So um, we just have to remember, and the reason why I'm showing you this again, it's because in the present perfect, it will be necessary for you to remember the regular verbs. Why? Because in the, in the present perfect, no vamos a utilizar el pasado, sino que vamos a utilizar el past participle, el pasado participio. But, una de las cosas fáciles es que 
in the regular verbs, en los verbos regulares, el pasado participio es el mismo pasado. ¿Qué quiere decir? Que esto no va a cambiar. Porque esta es la forma pasada y esta va a ser siempre la forma del pasado participio. Only with the regular verbs. Only with those. Because with the irregular verbs, that is going to change drastically. Okay? So we better remember that. Only with regular verbs, the past participle is going to be the same as the past or the simple past. Question so far. Well, we'll take that. I mean, okay, perfect. Now, as you can see here, with the irregular verbs, even the pronunciation is going to change. And the past participle is going to be completely different than the infinitive and the simple past. Why? In the infinitive, this one we say arise. In simple past, we say arose. In past participle, we say, we say arisen. So even the pronunciation is going to be different. Some of them are going to be like pretty much the same because as you remember, some of them have uh, the same, they, they, can, they can be regular and irregular so at the same time. So in, in those cases, like this one, awake, which it has the regular form and the irregular form, it will be up to you to design which one is like the easiest for you. So if you think that it will be easier for you to use the regular form, it's up to you to use the regular form. But if you think that it will be better for you to use the irregular form, so that will be also your decision. Okay, so we have awake, awake, awoke, awake, and awoken. So you see, B was, where been L take a look mire como cambia el verb be so it changes drastically so we say beat beat beaten become became become begin begun begun ben bent bent some of them do not change but some others will change drastically. So uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say with this is that we have to try to study the regular verbs or the regular verbs. Why? Because if you don't know the regular or irregular, it will be difficult for you to use these tense. I'm telling you since now. So let me hear. Um, I would like to have some volunteers. Es que se pelean, ¿verdad? No sé. <laughs> Claudia, okay. Let's... No, Vilma. Vilma, okay. Yes. I so Vilma, okay. Vilma, help me reading the first five here. You are going to read the simple past and the past participle too. Five, one, two, three, four, five. So we go till here. Okay. Arise, arose, arising. Okay. Awake, 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 awake. Okay. Um, be, was, were, being. Okay. Be, born, born, um, beat, beat, beaten. Become, okay. became, become. Okay, thank you very much for your participation, okay. Vilma. I saw Claudia too. Claudia, do you want to participate still? Yes. Okay, Claudia, let's go or let's start from begin all the way till here. Begin, began, begum. Ben, bent, bent. Bet, bet, better. Bet, bet, bit, bit, bit. No, it's the same pronunciation. Bit. 
I mean, this one is the same as this one. Bed, bed, or in this case, bait, because that changed. Bait. Bidding. Mm -hmm. Bid. 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 Okay. So let me see. I would like to have also Sonia. Sonia, help me with the last three, please. These three. Okay. Build. No, I'm sorry. Build. Bound, okay. Bound. 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 Like a. Bound. Mm -hmm. Bound. Bound. Mm -hmm. Bit. Bite. Bite. Bit. Bitten. Okay. Um, believe. Mm -hmm. Blood. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Now, here we have another part, which in this case, I'm not going to make the pronunciation and I will just select some people randomly, uh, which are going to help me to make the pronunciation. And later on, of course, I will check if you are pronouncing those well or not. If you're not pronouncing that correctly, I will let you know. So the first person that I need to help me is Fatima Guardado. Fatima Guardado, you're going to help me with three. One, two, three. Then I will need Damaris Vega with another three. One, two, three. Then I will need Patricia Rodriguez with another three. One, two, three. Then we have Nancy. Three, one, two, three, and the last one, Rosemary. One, two, three. So let's go. Draw, drew, and drown. Okay. Let let me let me stop you. The first one is draw. Oh, draw. Draw. Drew. Drew. Drawn. Drown. Okay. Let's continue with number two. Dream. No, it's in the definitivamente nunca le pronunciado. Dreamt. Dream. Dream. This one is dream, dreamed, just the T, and that one is dreamed with the D. Okay, dream, dream, and dream. It was something that, okay. And dreamed and dreamed. Yeah, this one, in este de acá, solo hacemos el sonido de la letra D, dreamed. Y en Dream. el sonido de la letra T, dreamed. dreamed. That's it. Number three. Let's go to number three. Drink, drunk, and drunk. Drink, drunk, drunk. Thank you very much. Now, who is the next one? Me, teacher. Drive, draw. Driving. Okay. Eat, eat, eating. That's oh. eaten. Let me stop you there. Eaten. That's eaten. It's like, uh, like with your throat. It's not eating. Because if you're if you say eating, es como que lo estés pronunciando en, en progresivo con ing. So the difference that with that one is eaten, como con eating. throat. Okay. Eating. Okay. Fall, fail, fallen. Okay. Feel, fail, fail. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Who is the next one? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Feel, felt, felt. Okay. Fine, fall, fall. Okay, I will stop you there. In this case, we do not pronounce the letter U. So we just say fought, fought. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the last one. Fine, fall, fall. Found, found. Found, found. Okay. Who is the next one? Flee. Flee. Play. Okay. Fly, flu, flow. Okay. Forward, forward, forbidden. This one is forbid, forbade, forbidden, forbidden. 
Forbid. Forbidden. Forbidden. That's the way. Okay, thank you very much. Now, Rosemary, I guess. Four cats. Four cats. Four cats. That was really easy. <laughs> Let's go to the last one. Forget, forgot, forgot. Forgotten. Okay. So remember, when someone tells you, cuando alguien le diga usted present perfect, la el manera del verbo que vamos a utilizar es el past participle, which en los verbos irregulares ellos tienen su propia forma in past participle. Some of them are like the same. Some of them are similar to the simple past, but some others are completely different. As you can see the verb feel, in past, simple past is felt, and in past participle is felt. So those are like the same. But in some others, we will have to memorize them or I don't know, it will be like the way you feel that is better for you, okay? So here we have the usage or how we have to use the present perfect. In the present perfect, the first thing that we're going to use it is to express a present result of the past actions. For example, we have here, he hasn't done his homework. El maestro le está diciendo, he hasn't done his homework. What do you guys understand? ¿Qué entendemos por esa sentence? Él no hizo las tareas. No, if we say él no hizo, eso ya es pasado, que no lo hizo. Él no ha no hecho. Ha hecho. No ha hecho. Recuérdense que el Dije que el has, el auxiliar, significaba a o e, ¿sí? So, what is the, uh, the present tense? ¿Cuál es la forma presente de este verbo? Don, ¿alguien sabe? Do. Do. So, what is the past form? ¿Cuál es la forma pasada de do? Did. Did, excellent. So, remember, the first part, which or where we have to use the present perfect, is going to be when we want to express a present result of a past action. So, what about form number two? To express life experiences, and we can use ever for questions and never for negative purposes. In questions and preguntas, vamos a utilizar, we're going to use ever. So the structure that we have is like, have you ever been child? Have you ever been child? A child, I'm sorry. Have you ever been, have you ever been a child? So when, when someone asks you that question, what would you understand by that? Because it's very important, first of all, that you understand what someone is asking you to understand obviously the context. Yes, if you don't understand what someone is asking you, of course, you won't be able to give an answer to that. So with these two uses that we have just seen, do you have any questions so far? Or is everything clear? Está todo claro? Teacher. Yes. Can I omit the word ever you can omit it because the word ever is just to emphasize something so it's up to you if you want to emphasize it you can use ever if you don't want to emphasize the action you can simply omit it so you can simply say have you been a child without specifying because when we use ever it's like uh Ha sido alguna vez un niño? So we're just specifying the action. But if you don't want to specify, you can simply omit it. No problem to that. So I think that there's no any other questions. So we are going to move on. 
we are going to also use the present perfect to express unfinished past. Pasado sin finalizar. Why? Because as we can see on the photos or in the images, it says that they have been friends for 20 years. What does it mean? It means that when they were a child, they started their friendship. But now, even though 20 years happened or 20 years passed, they are still friends. So in this, in this, uh, in this case, because the action never finished, because in the, in the present, they are still friends. That's why we call them unfinished past. Okay? It, it, is, it is clear? Si está claro? Yes. Yes. Okay, vamos a ver el jueves si eso está claro, ¿verdad? Remember, desde la semana pasada les vengo diciendo el jueves hay examen, el jueves hay examen. Vamos a ver si es cierto. You have to study the verb. So now, what's, what is the present form? ¿Cuál es la forma presente of this verb? The verb being. Be. be. The verb be. We just saw it like some minutes ago. So let's move on to another part. So when you want to present new information, you are also going to use the present perfect. For example, wow, I've got a five. This is just a contraction of I have. For example, you can say I have, that will be equals to, oh my God. So that will be equals to if I have less, oh my God, that's one, let me see, Jesus Christ. Let me, let me try to fix my, let me see. I'm gonna fix my keyboard because it's not, it's not working right now. Okay, there I have. So uh, what I was saying is that in the, the contraction that we have there, when I say I have, is the same as if I have I've. Another one, if I say you have, is the same as if I have you've. If I say have, is going to be the same as if I have with. And if I say they have, it's going to be the same as if I have they've. So the same thing happens for he. He has, it's going to be the same as this. And she has, is going to be equals to Yes. Okay. So those are the contractions that we have. It's very important also, muy importante que no se confundan con este his or she's, porque puede ser que lo confundan con el verbo to be, because the verb be, the contraction, la contracción del verbo to be es la misma. So, ¿cómo voy a saber que estoy utilizando la contracción del present perfect? Very simple. Why? Because if you see something like this, si usted ve algo como esto y quiere identificar si es el presente perfecto, ¿qué se le viene a la mente? O what do you think que va a tener después de esto? The verb. The verb. El verbo en pasado participio. Si usted no tiene un verbo después de esto, quiere decir que en ese caso entonces va a ser el verbo to be y no la contracción de he has. I hope it's clear. Espero que esté claro. So, the pronunciation of the contractions sometimes is a little bit difficult because we have to be clear in the pronunciation. So, if I say I have, you have to say I've. If you say you have, you have to say you've. We have we've, they have Dave, 
he has his, she has shits. Okay, so obviously it will be up to you if you want to make the, the contraction or not. You can decide whether to make the contraction or not. But of course, most of uh, people who is native of the language will always use contractions. Why? They love to speak in a short way, okay? So let me see. Um, can I have a volunteer? Can I have a volunteer? Rosemary, thank you very much, Rosemary and Sonia. So uh, can you try to make the pronunciation of the contractions, please, of these contractions? Just try to do it. You, Rosemary. Okay. I have, I. Okay. have, do. Okay. We have well. We've. We've. They have they've. Okay. He has his. Mm -hmm. His or he is his. Like his. His. Mm -hmm. She has she's. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Sonia. I have I've. You have you, we have will, they have they, he has his, she has she's. Thank and you very a much. Question, a question, teacher, and it, it, it's, it's yeah, it's gonna be it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's. Okay, so thank you so much for that. So I think that is pretty clear. So we are going to move on to the next part and let's see some other um, some other occasions where we where we can use the present perfect. We were talking about new information and we still have another example here, which it says that police have arrested two men. Okay, so we are giving new information. Obviously, that's going to be on the journal, on the journal. So, because it is new information, we are using the present perfect. Also, in this type of sentence, when we have the expression, it is the first time, when it is the first time something has happened, when we have this expression, we will have to use the present perfect. So every single time that you say it is the first time, you will have to use the present perfect after that expression, okay? So we have the example here. It is the first time I have won a lottery. It is the first time I have won a lottery, okay? So do we, got, do we understand? Or do you have any questions so far? Okay, no questions. No. Okay, so here we have like uh, the detailed information about everything that we just saw. Aquí tenemos todo lo que acabamos de ver. Affirmative, subject, auxiliary, plus past participle. Subject, auxiliary, past participle. Negatives, subject, auxiliary in negative, past participle. So as you can see, haven't, hasn't, or have not, or has not. And obviously the past participle. The questions we have here, have, then the subject, then the past participle. Has, then the subject, and then the past participle. And of course, the question mark at the end. So this is like the general review of everything that we have just seen till the moment. So with this information that we have, is there any question? If there's no questions, we are going to go directly to the practice, okay? Well, we are not going to do this conversation, well, 
It's because of the time. So we are going to go just with this part, the part in which you will have to use the present perfect questions, negatives or affirmatives. And this is part number two, in which you will have to, to verify which of these uh, answers that you have fits perfectly on this area, okay? That's what you have to do. And this is the last part. So I think that we are all set. So let's move on to the breaker rooms. Remember guys, if you can speak in English with your classmates, try to do it. This is the only time where we all can practice. So let's go try to join your rooms and keep working on the exercises, please. No sé si es esa. Una de esas es, creo. Yes. 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 Eh. Only eh, choose a have or has. Mm. I'm sorry, but no is the first. The boys have Yes, has. Um, ah? has. The no, boy has. because the voice is plural. The voice, they. The voice have. Vaya, es teacher. Eh, hay otro, hay otro antes que ese, ese es el primero, ¿verdad? No, that's the first one. This one. Okay, yes, yes. Yo no me puedo ir, vos. You keep, keep. You kept yeah. a pair for three years. Mm 
I don't. I am not a Ya terminó y no, no logramos. Ajá. Creo que este. Ah, no. de... Ahorita está. Ajá. Quiero ver. Era de poner los verbos en, en pasado. Ajá. Ver, pero. No. No, he. He has. He has went. He has. He has went. Went. My grandmother has. Luz, luz. My mother Ooh. has, my mother has, has, uh, Lucen. 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 And it's not went. And the previous one is not when it's gone. 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 Gone, gone okay. Yes, gone. gone. Mm -hmm. Yes, teacher, thank you. Gone. Loose. Okay, guys, I saw that some of you were struggling with the past participle of the verbs. I saw that some of you were struggling, like how to use have and how to use has. So the challenge for you is like, if you're having some issues, try to study at home, okay? So also, if you want me to send you the presentation about today's class, I can send it to you so you can have it and try to study. But study is not that I will send it to you and you will have it on your phone and you will never study. 
because tomorrow we are going to also have another review about present perfect, but tomorrow we are going to focus a little bit more on questions. So we are going to study once again the verbs because we are having a lot of issues with the verbs, okay? So I just want to also remind you that you have to keep working on the platform. So today or this week, you have until Friday to complete the last part of the platform so you don't have any issues at the end. Because remember, our last class is on Thursday. Si nuestra última clase es el, el jueves, y para el viernes usted o el jueves mismo ya tiene que haber terminado toda la plataforma. So you don't have any problems or any situations at the end of the month. So if there's no any other question, guys, that's going to be all for today. Thank you so much for coming to the class. And I hope to see you tomorrow at the same time. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye.